Hello guys, welcome to study algorithms and today we would be looking at brute force algorithmic paradigms. First, I would tell you the definition and show you an example. We would then see what limitations this method might have. Going forward, I would explain you why you should even consider using this method and in what scenarios it can fail. So let us dive into it. So what do you exactly mean by a brute force method? The best way to understand any problem would be by an example. I am taking over here an example of a padlock. You must have seen these kind of padlocks in day to day life. So this one can be opened using a three digit combination. Now this has a combination of two, three, four. If you know this combination, then it is fairly simple to open it. But what if you don't know this combination and you still want to open this padlock desperately and you're trying that maybe I can just open this padlock somehow. Well, what do you do? One thing that would come to your mind is, what if I try all the combinations that are possible? So I would go with 000, then 001, 002, 003, and then so on. You get the idea. And eventually, what would happen is, you would land upon the code 2, 3, 4, and this padlock would open. So what did you just do? You just exhausted all of your possibilities to open the padlock. And this exactly is a brute force method. You are deploying all the resources available to you, no matter how much the time, and you're trying to solve a problem. In this case, the maximum number of combinations that you could have was 1000. And going on and on and on, you would eventually try to figure it out. But do you see the problem with this method? Momentarily, it may seem that given some time, I should be able to solve any problem using a brute force method. Well, that is true, but it is quite limited. In our earlier example of a padlock, the maximum combinations that we had were just 1000. Let me take up another problem, and that is some, one of my favorite problems of a Rubik's Cube. All of you must be familiar with a Rubik's Cube. It has got six faces and six colors. And ultimately, what I need to do is, each face should have a single color. You cannot even start to think how many total number of combinations are possible. This, for instance, is one combination. If I rotate it in this way, this is another combination. I rotate it another, this is again another combination. In fact, any combination you try, there is a very slight chance that you would be repeating one of your choices. And this Rubik's Cube has a total of 43 quintillion total combinations. That's like 43 followed by 18 zeros. That's too much, right? So you cannot even hope to solve this Rubik's Cube using a brute force method. Yes, given a lot of time, you would eventually arrive at a solution and you would be able to solve it, but that won't be optimal. Since I'm a kind of a control freak, I would just go ahead and solve one of the faces for you. So I made one of the faces. What I did here was I applied some tricks to solve this one face. And that is not a brute force method. To summarize a brute force method, what you can say is you are exhausting all of your options to find at a solution. In most of my videos, you must have seen that I always emphasize upon the fact that do find a brute force solution, do find a brute force solution. Why is that so? Let us try to have a look at it. I always emphasize on the fact that a good developer would always try to come up with a brute force solution first and then try to optimize it. But why do I say that? That is because a brute force method would guarantee you to find a solution if that exists. What do I mean by that? Let us take up the problem of a magic square. So a magic square is a three by three grid in which you have to fill the digits from one to nine in such a way that some of all the rows, columns, and the diagonals are the same. Now, how do you go about filling this? A brute force approach would be you start filling of the numbers randomly and then try to calculate the sums of all the rows and columns. In this case, we found the sums to be pretty different and hence this is not the solution. 
If you just keep on applying the brute force method, something like this, I just took up some random combinations to just find out the sums. And while applying all of these combinations, you would eventually, maybe after 32,000 possibilities, you would land up on the exact solution, which would be something like, in this case, the sum of all rows, columns, and diagonal comes out to be 50. But you were able to arrive at this solution because a solution to this problem existed. Let me take up an example of a problem to which a solution does not exist. So instead of a 3 by 3 magic square, this time I have a 2 by 2 magic square and I'm required to fill in numbers from 1 to 4 such that sum of all rows, columns and diagonals are the same. No matter how many combinations I try, I would never reach an answer. So this is what makes a brute force method so important. If a solution to a problem exists, you will always be able to find it using a brute force method. And hence, that is what makes it the developer's favorite. So I would like to end this by saying that as a good rule of thumb, you should always try to focus on a brute force method first to try to come up with a solution to the problem. You can always optimize it later. This would also ensure that you have understood the problem statement correctly. I hope I was able to give you some insights about brute force algorithmic paradigms. You can find a text-based explanation to this using the link provided in the description below. Also, please let me know your thoughts and suggestions in the comments below. Thank you.